murder, grave robbing, arson, and the musician known as Sting. What do all of these things have in common? Well, today you're going to find out on this episode of Have a Clue TV Review, where we're going to be talking about the hit new TV show, Only Mur Murders in the Building, starring Steve Martin, Martin Shore, and Selena Gomez. So, exclusively on Hulu. Exclusively on Hulu. Yeah, so today uh, I am your host, Miles, subbing in yet again, and this is... Philip. Today we're going to be talking about this a great little show that they put out for us. Uh, surprisingly good. So um, I guess let's start off by talking about how we found out about this show. Yeah, I've I've heard about it like in the rumblings on the like the news, like the film news trade and stuff. Like people are talking about like, mm -hmm. oh, one of the only good shows on Hulu. I get it. People who watch Hands Me Tale, it, I know that's a good show. I've seen like some shots and it looks cool. I'll watch it eventually. Just depressing as fuck. Um, but they were like, oh, one of the only good shows that aren't FX on Hulu, like complete originals. And then, um, and then Miles was watching, I think we were you watching week to week. Uh, yeah, I was watching it week to week. Uh, yeah. I think I started after week four. Yeah. Um, was where I got onto it because my mom actually was like, oh, hey, do you want to watch this show with me? Because we're always looking for, you know, different shows to watch together so that we can hang out, you know, do something fun i guess so uh i was like okay sounds interesting I, I was kind of a little bit apprehensive going into it yeah because you know sometimes she doesn't always have shows that i like to watch right, that right. she wants to watch uh she watches a lot of british murder mysteries so i came to this being like oh this is just gonna be one of those british <laughs> cookie cutter murder mystery shows right. some of them are fun yeah, yeah no i mean there's some good ones out there and, yeah. and i mean they aren't they aren't horrible at all. It's just there's a lot of them. There's B a B lot from BBC. Of them. Yeah. Uh, oh my god. It, it's like a genre over there yeah. in itself. And it's... you know what's sad is that a lot of them are really good, but because when you have something so good, but they're so similar, it mm -hmm. kind of just blends. Well, I can't tell which one she's watching. Sometimes I'll walk in and I'll be like, "Which one's this one?" Like I don't recognize any of the cast, yeah. or I recognize somebody, and then she's like, "No, that's a different show." And yeah. I'm like. Wait, so this guy's on three different murder mystery shows? Yeah, they like to reuse a yeah. certain carnival actors. Well, okay, go on. But yeah, so I got into it, started watching it, and I was like, wow, this is really good. And, you know, Steve Martin, amazing. Uh, Martin Short, and everything that Steve Martin and Martin Short have worked on together has ended up being at least good, you know? Um, and most of their stuff has actually been great. And um, another thing that I was apprehensive about was Selena Gomez, but mm -hmm. it turned yes. out that she gave a great performance. So, uh, yeah, that's how I found out about this show, and I've really her, enjoyed it. So not far. even just yeah. a great performance. It's her best performance, and one of her only good ones. Yeah. Yeah. I. I Wait, I, you I, didn't like uh, Princess Protection Service? Oh, fuck no. I, I'll say this about uh, Selena Gomez. I think she's very charming personality, and she's like a great person. Seems like she has a good head on her shoulders. She's talented in her own way in terms of marketing and image and, you know, body positivity and, you know, what's being a feminist icon. Mm -hmm. But in terms of acting, <laughs> oh, shit. But uh, but she was good in Wiz Wizards of Waverly Place because, you know, she didn't have a lot of emotional scenes. She had some, but it was mostly for comedic bits. She has a pretty good comedic timing. Mm -hmm. But I'll be honest, I saw third lead with Selena Gomez. Like, oh, this is going to be a shit show. Oh my god! Wait, what? It's, it's written by Mar Steve Martin. Um, I'm like, wow! How how the mighty have fallen? That's what I was thinking. <laughs> and then and then I heard the news trade. Uh, it's a great show. I still couldn't. I refused to believe it. You kidding me? <laughs> Selena Gomez in a good show, and not even a good show, a great show. Uh, and and the thing is, I was like the the critical reception. It's like a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes, like average rating eight or nine out of ten. Uh, which is fucking crazy, mm -hmm. especially Hulu. It's like the highest rated Hulu show, and then and then Miles started bringing it up, and I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll like I'll buy because I, I made Miles watch a bunch of Korean shit. So <laughs> what's it called? I, we, he watched Squid Game, so I felt like I owed it. I owed it to watch. This was better than Squid Game. Uh, okay, very different shows. Very different. Very different. Squid Game's not a. <laughs> <laughs> what's it called? So I was like, okay, I'll watch this, and then you watch Parasite. He still hasn't watched Parasite. That's a call. <laughs> and you know luckily um we were actually for this episode uh viewers our audio only listeners which is all of you guys 
we were supposed to talk about Dexter season six or eight, but because uh, both Blake and Ron couldn't make it, they requested for us to delay it uh, until like where everybody's available, and you know we're just all going to talk about it. And uh, next week episode, we're going to talk about Cowboy Bebop. So it'll be a while before we talk about Dexter. So we had to think of a last minute show to watch on the spot. And then the thing is, I already downloaded all the episodes, and I was already kind of watching it. And I was like, okay, we'll do only murders in the building. And Miles was like ecstatic. He took off his pants. He started dancing. And then he was like, oh, okay, yeah, we're going to do this episode. That's uh, false news. That's fake storytelling right there. I, uh, I've never done that in my life. Okay. At least in front of people. All right. Yeah. Right. What's well, it called? That's what yeah. I'm telling you now. And so what you did behind doors. Yeah. And then so I, and then, and then I've watched it. All, it's a really quick watch. It's it's very engrossing. It's short, like thirty minutes an episode. Uh, thirty to forty. Yeah, around yeah. there. What's it called? It's um, you know, that's actually one thing I want to talk about um, about these online streaming services when they're releasing TV shows. They aren't sticking to the standard time slot format anymore, and I yeah. think that that works well because then you aren't const- your episodes flow better. I feel because you aren't constrained to a certain time limit per episode and you're also not yeah. writing to ads yeah. yeah and you're also not writing to stretch out an episode because you got 23 minutes worth of really good content but it needs to be an hour-long episode yeah yeah and that's why i do like these a lot of premium cable uh, networks that you know not necessarily work towards ads or um that's why also like fx on hulu is such mm-hmm. a cool idea where um, FX shows that are exclusively for Hulu, you know, usually have a better, more creative freedom or they don't have, you know, ad requirements or length requirements. Though, don't get me wrong, there's still great shows from FX original like Atlanta, um, Fargo and stuff that has those rules. But, you know, it's weird. Honestly, this show should have been FX. Mm-hmm. Like, when <laughs> it feels like an FX show in terms of quality. Um, so having, uh, what's it called? the lack of runtime uh, requirements and ad requirements, I think really benefits shows like this where like they don't, they're not forcing um, episodes to be a certain length. Sometimes some of episodes are shorter, some of episodes are longer, depending on how much material is required for each episode. Mm-hmm. Because each episode has very distinct story beats to it. Yes. And that's also what helps it stand out. And those story beats don't work if you have requirements about how long it needs to be. Okay. And now that'll be a great segue to our first segment. Miles, what is what's it called first tell us how okay so you already mentioned how you got into it um and how how you liked it first overall thoughts on the season and favorite episode real quick okay so overall thoughts on the season was it was a great season uh i think it had just the right mixture of comedy drama little bit of absurdism there once in a while uh and it worked out really well. It showed off Steve Martin's comedic talents, Martin Short's comedic talents, Tina Fey's comedic talents. Oh, yeah. Even Selene Gomez's comedic talents perfectly. And also showed them being good actors. Yeah. I mean, like... It really feels like Steve Martin has kind of taken Selena Gomez under his wing now. A little bit. Yeah, in terms of, of like, acting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To help her develop into being her own unique actress right a better comedic talent too instead of just being kind of that cookie cutter actress in the roles that she was in before yeah i i agree with that i mean yeah i i I, i've never liked selena gomez i mean honestly yes wizard waverly place i've watched as a kid have you seen that Mm -hmm. as a kid yeah yeah, Yeah, it was a funny show yeah Yeah. like as a kid it was like cool and stuff like that but um i haven't liked any of the movie stuff um i know she produced like 13 reasons why that went to through the shit bucket by the end of the season mm-hmm. a fucking character randomly gets aids or some shit and dies that was uh yeah What's that was it? not a good show no everybody was all over it but then when people started looking at it everybody kind of shut up about it real quick because they realized oh this show's actually kind of like depressing and dark and not very good yeah i mean it's a yeah. one season show that they stretch out to four seasons yeah. Even the first season, I was like, okay, there's some problems with it. It's very melodramatic, unrealistic. It's um, also a problematic show in terms uh, yeah. of what it's saying. Yeah. Because it's What's like got, trying or... to justify suicide while at the same time, like, honestly, there's a lot of. Uh, yeah. In, so, in some ways, yes. I don't want to get into it because there's those. I don't want to. Oh, get into the whole thirteen reasons why fandom and that whole plot. But okay, but that just it was just a reference to Selena Gomez. Yes, but 
Yeah. So that's um. So she did that, and you know, like I said, and you know, she had a successful music career outside. So I mentioned earlier my hesitation when she came in, but this one I think like really she contrasted well with uh, Steve Martin and Martin Short, and also like kind of also highlights the ridiculous nature of two old men trying to do murder mysteries, and it's not, it doesn't it doesn't make it stale. Like she she's essentially like a, a straight man, but she mm-hmm. also has jokes herself. And that contrast just highlights the humor between the two, and they have such a good dynamic. Their their chemistry is fantastic. Surprisingly, mm-hmm. who would you, who would think Selena Gomez has great chemistry with Steve Martin? Then again, Steve Martin has great chemistry with anyone. Mm-hmm. So, you know that happened, and that was cool. Um, and it, it, so back to my for my overall thoughts this season. Um, I loved it. It was a huge surprise. It was a revelation. I what's it called? I I, I was I was like so close to killing all the critics. And uh, and Miles, not not really. It figured it'll be people. Please, I... he, he literally yelled at me one day when I was like, "You know what the best show on television is right now?" And then he was like, "You better not fucker. You say only murders in the building." But this was before he watched oh, yeah. it, mind you. Um, and I was like, "No, Succession." And then he was like, "Oh yeah, never mind. That's a good." Oh show. yeah, no, that yeah. is that is. I well, I've been I've only seen little bits of season three, which who we might talk about in a future episode. Mm, um, yeah, what's it called? And that is a fantastic show, but uh. Yeah, I, I, he was, and Miles was being nice. I was actually a lot meaner. I was like, I was like, you dumb fuck, stop fucking talking about that fucking show. And, you know, um, and I felt bad afterwards. I apologize. I, I only mentioned it I, like twice before that, too. I know. So. It was just like, but it's two times too many. Miles. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you don't think that now, though, right? No, no. I fucking love the show. It's, um, yeah. and look, I, I was always going to give it a chance just because, like, look, I, I, I'm, the thing is, like, I know, like, I have hesitations, but, like, I don't want, I don't want my uh, reservations about a show because of like, you know, external factors or my own um, personal feelings about like, like a person's like acting ability or like uh, just a premise or something like that. If a, a good show, a great show is a great show. And if people are saying it is, I at least I feel like I'm curious enough to see what the hubbub is about right mm-hmm. um and that's why we'll also be talking about like how we want live action next week because um i've been hearing some things about that and it's the opposite of only murders in the building yeah um, so but we'll save that for next week we'll save that for next week yeah so i watched it i loved it i thought the uh once again the chemistry between the three main leads um martin Shore, c martin and selena gomez absolutely fantastic selena gomez shows us shows us the I mean, she shows her her comedic side before but this is the best version of her comedic side and mm-hmm. her comedic abilities and c martin um you know he's been dramatic before but this one is like the perfect mix between like him from the jerk and the him from like okay i mean he has other some dramatic roles but like his you know more dramatic stuff and uh and also he's evolved so much in both uh, comedy and drama we're so eff- effortless between the two and martin short is just he's a fucking Oh, it's he is a revelation. Every time yeah. he talks, it's funny. Like it's uh, his, his eccentricity is really what pulls br- you in. Exactly, because yeah, he's a very eccentric person. He's eccentric and, and he's yet dry at the same that. time. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's eccentric, has the like, most eccentricities. Where right? you know he's talking about you know the, the people in the play mm-hmm. where it's like, oh, you're back at the line, right? Yeah. And then and then at the end, like he says something ridiculous but in a very dry fashion, mm-hmm. and it works so well. The contrast. He's he's one of my favorites, favorite comedian actors. Uh, he was also on. He was on SNL, right? Uh, I'm not sure. Let me. What's it called? Let me do double side. But yeah, I yeah uh, yeah he was three, on SNL. I know the least about him, but. I, I like he like I knew him from like he's like you know yeah he was on SNL so I was right okay so mm-hmm. I, I just want to make sure and then um and you know he's he, yeah he's really good like you know Father of the Bride also and uh, Three Fugitives Three Migos he's 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 cool he's the best part of uh, How I Met Your Mother <laughs> uh, he's like in there as uh what's it called uh, uh Seagull's boss mm-hmm. or like lawyer boss and his scenes were the best. Um, so it's just it's cool it's cool to see him it's cool for them to have this opportunity to have this almost like like late career resurgence for mm-hmm. all these actors not saying they were well that's declining kinda, that's kind of how i saw it at first before i watched it was i was like okay this is you know the steve martin twilight passion project right pretty much just the thing that well that's not wrong though it is yeah, but you know usually they aren't that good but, I, I, sometimes, sometimes sometimes they're good yeah sometimes he's had yeah. twilight fun. Um, but it, it really seems like he's still a strong actor and yeah. this isn't him going out on his own terms. This is him kind of redefining who he is oh, yeah, as yeah. an actor and as a director, writer, producer. 
whatever he is. Yeah, because yeah. he, he created this with, uh, I think, Hoffman. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, kudos kudos to Steve Martin. Did a fantastic fucking job. Um, it's a lot of... N- this is like you know once just to make it short because we're gonna get into our favorite episodes i think overall this the writing absolutely i already talked about it excelled in mixing uh the mystery elements dramatic elements the comedic elements all in one seamless motion where nothing felt so dis uh disparate each other like you could like o- only people who do that really well are like koreans um <laughs> you're biased yeah I, it's true though we we have the best murder mystery films of all time memories of murder is still one of the best um murder mystery of all time which i will make miles see but he has to see parasite first and then <laughs> I, I watched 20 minutes of parasite <laughs> <laughs> what's it called he didn't even get to the, the the big ones you guys you guys know what i'm talking about halfway through it's a certain thing happens but it all worked because the characters embodied all three of those elements really well and the also the mystery that which is central part of it was actually compelling and it was you you know they understood the genre really well the tropes which is like what's it called um you know initial investigation uh what's it called fringe suspects uh red herrings the uh insider being the killer all along type of thing and all those tropes from using these murder, murder mystery type of tro- mm-hmm. uh but they subvert them so well but or they add they use a trope but they add a new element to it and present it in a different way uh which and big good segue into my uh favorite episode which is the uh, episode seven, which is about uh, Teddy and Theo's relationship, particularly Theo's which perspective. Which is also my favorite episode. It is fantastic. One and, of the most creatively done episodes of a TV show that I've ever seen. I think you texted me too, right when the episode aired. You're like, oh, you got to watch it. It's one of the most creative episodes. And at first I was like, shut the fuck up, <laughs> you <laughs> fucking bitch. I don't want to hear about the show anymore. And then I watch it. I feel bad. Miles, I apologize for you know cussing you out. It, What's it called? It's the episode's title is uh, The Boy from 6B. And it is absolutely great. It's follows Theo Theo Demos, who is the son of their main sponsor, Teddy Demos. Yes. Who owns Demos's Deli and also a variety of other enterprises that we find out about kind of through this episode. Yeah, he's and it's directed by uh Sherry and uh, the B who Mm -hmm. she's a palestinian american actress director producer and screenwriter and she made other stuff like the l word and uh, rami which won a golden globe and emmy and stuff it's a show that nobody watched about uh, middle easterns and um she did a fantastic job in the show too yes it's like and the audio design just fantastic it's like Mm -hmm. it's i've seen a lot of good audio design lately um particularly with the deaf community Mm -hmm. Um, i'm not talking about quiet place so should we tell them what the thing is with this episode right that makes it so great so uh teddy is a sponsor for uh the podcast you know what we're jumping ahead of the gun we haven't even said the premise of the show we just got ahead Uh, okay so yeah we'll come back to talking about why this is our favorite episode but first yes let's go over the premise of this of the show. What's well, so the premise of the show? It's uh, if basically it follows uh three strangers who live in a building in uh Manhattan, right? And the three characters are Charles Hayden Savage, who was a retired actor of the popular uh, detective drama show Brazos, played by Steve Martin, mm-hmm. and uh, and Oliver Putnam, who it was a Broadway director who has a bunch of ideas, you know, regarding productions. They failed in the past, some succeeded, and uh, Selena Gomez play, and this is played by Martin Short, and Selena Gomez plays Mabel Mora who is a young woman who lives in the Arconia and says her aunt's, um, her aunt's complex. Mm-hmm. And she has a mysterious past of her own and maybe a possible connection to who got murdered. So they're together, they're investigating, they kind of bond over their uh, love of, uh, what's it called, it real crime podcast. Uh, specifically, uh, Not All is Okay in Oklahoma. Yes. Which is <laughs> by- a podcast by a character played by Tina Fey. The character's name is um, Cinda Canning. Cinda Canning. Yeah, she's it's it's and it's uh, what's called it's hilarious. But and um, and after they bond over their mutual love for, for uh, you know real crime podcasts, they find out that one of the residents, mm-hmm. whose name is Tim Kono, um, is found dead in the building. Initially ruled as a suicide, but once they do their investigation for you know this podcast, they feel otherwise that it's a possible homicide. But do they feel like that because they have found ev- evidence that it's a possible homicide? Or do they feel like that because they, they just, want it, their life to be interesting? They want to be involved in something exactly, like this? Exactly, because all of them are in their own uh, weird creative or personal rut mm-hmm. that um, 
what's it called that they need to feel them per- uh, pull themselves out of and they're also losing some type of purpose in each way whether it's uh c martin and you know basically it's like a washed out actor mm-hmm. of a popular show hasn't done much since he lived there for like 30 years right that's what they said yeah um and then uh and he and he has a basically um you know a pride issue and also a complicated past with uh a daughter-like figure named lucy mm-hmm um, and also trouble romantic relationships. He actually has a lot. When I think about it, listening it yeah. out, uh, Martin Short, who has uh, at most, let's just say, a difficult relationship with um, his son, and on top of that, uh, because of his own uh, financial failures with uh, Broadway Productions, have left him in a creative rut and uh, doubting himself. A lot of self doubt about his own abilities as, as, as uh, I mean, success. Justifiably so. I yeah. Mean, splash. Yes. <laughs> splash. Um, <laughs> And uh, and uh, Mabel Mora, who lives in the building, she's a uh, group. I think she, did they say Bronx. Is she from the Bronx, or but she or she's uh, from another borough in New yeah, York? she's from or uh, New Jersey. I, I think she's actually from New Jersey. Yeah, yeah New Jersey, right? Yeah, because okay. uh, that's she, where her where she goes back into New Jersey right, in that one and episode, Jersey, and then she yeah, sees yeah. her mom there, and her mom's like, "What are you doing back in town?" Exactly. She's yeah. Uh, yeah, she's not from what's it called? She's not from Manhattan, the wealthy side, and it's a little bit of a chip on her shoulder, and. Um, she's obsessed with you know mysteries and stuff like that and also she's trying to um you know find her own path and career Mm -hmm. um but at the same time she's haunted by the uh, death of her friend who not just the death of her friend but the loss of her friend group right right which which led to which yeah which which led to because of the the hardy boys by the way which i love (laughs) Mm -hmm. um you know so everybody's dealing with their own type of uh you know like um you know what's it called struggles fatal flaw and um this event kind of brings them together in an opportunity to give kind of new meaning and a new life a second run at wherever they are even though mabel moore is only like fucking 28 so it's like that but more so for uh charles uh charles and oliver what's it called or charles always says i'm brazos you know mm-hmm. um yeah, uh, what's because I, he played an old police detective. That's another thing about Steve Burns. Miles, I already said that, you dumb fucking person. You I'm did? just kidding. I'm just joking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm who, kidding who people remember him as a police detective from this old classic TV show. Yeah. But they don't really care about him. And they show that pretty heavily. It's like, no. oh, you're Brazos. And, you know, the guy's like, oh, yeah. Uh, can you take a picture of us? And hands him the camera. Yeah. Which... That's actually a Steve Martin thing, I believe, where uh, that was like a joke he would uh, pull on like famous people. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I remember that, yeah. So I thought that that was funny where he turned it around on himself right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. And that's good. Oh, gosh. Steve Martin. He's 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 amazing. Um, So now we will get into our favorite episode, Mm -hmm. which we both talked about is The Boy in the 6P, episode 7, directed... um, what the, oh, by the way, we gotta mention this. Sting is in the episode. Sting, not not in the episode. He's in the series. Go watch, go watch the show. <laughs> yeah. Um Directed by uh, I Sherry did mention that Sting was in it. Oh, I'm sorry. Now I'm the dumb fucking person. Yeah, in the very intro, I mentioned that. I know yeah. you mentioned in the intro. I just had to remind them. It's the intro, you know. Yeah. At least remind. It was only five fucking minutes, Miles. Piece of fucking shit. Douche. Lip think motherfucker. I'm just we don't kidding. actually hate each other this much. No, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's about um, you know, the sponsor for the show, uh, Teddy, who is owns like a deli place mm-hmm. or a deli company. Uh, we find that is actually a secret grave robber, and the person to help him uh, with that is his deaf son. And they have this weird, interesting relationship. It's somewhat hostile at first. It's um, but 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 at the same time, is uh, there's uh. Uh, the core of the relationship is this um, strong love and bond that they have for each yeah. other, and they're willing to protect each other at all costs. Which yeah. is also their fatal fall both ends. Well, they showed off from the beginning with Teddy trying to kind of connect with his son. He yeah. doesn't know how to do it. He's done everything at that point with his deaf son. He's learned sign language, which he makes a big point of saying, you know, not every parent learns ASL for their kid who's deaf. Yeah. And, um, you know, going through all these things, trying to be there for him and trying to take care of him and really connect with him uh, to the point where it um, is driving him crazy that he still feels like he can't connect with him. Uh, And, you know, that that's where the little bit of the violence and the tension in their relationship does come in. Yeah. I what's called I 
I do agree with that. Yeah. And then, so, and it's from his perspective, the deaf son. Mm -hmm. And as a result, the episode, the audio design follows that, um, follows um, what he would probably um, understand from that perspective, which is yeah. usually like, it's not just complete silence. It's like, it's kind of this um, buzz. Noise yeah, to you it. get your buzz, but then you also get your atmospheric music that yeah. kind of follows along the path. It's like, and then, it's more internal, yeah. like, yeah, like a uh, internal uh, sound dialogue well, that they're having with us. I think that that's also an important thing because that music, they make a big point um, when they show the scene of him as a kid. He can't hear music, but he can imagine music just barely. Like, you know, he can kind of feel the sound of music a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, I know that sounds strange, but you got to watch the he, show. Because he understand. had that scene yeah. with uh, his dad. Remember his dad yeah. was trying to see, like, you can't hear the music. Yeah. You can't feel the music. And he got upset. And then, you but know. But the then... music does break through for a second to yeah. him. And so you kind of sense that. So music becomes a big thing in this episode. Yeah. I, oh, you know, I also way. like the first thing that he signs is people in this t town talk too way too fucking much or something. Right. Yeah. yeah because he he, he <laughs> signs that to the camera at the beginning of the episode, and I thought that that was great because after that, basically no dialogue at all for the entire episode until the last like ten seconds. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, Teddy Demas, who plays uh, what's go who plays Teddy Demas, mm -hmm. or, or no, the person who plays Teddy Demas is uh, Nathan Lane. What's it called? And he is fantastic too. I think mm -hmm. he really stretches his dramatic muscles in this show. I mean, he, you, you might you might know him from the producers, or uh, he was uh, what's it called? He voiced um, Timon in The Lion King, and uh, you know, People vs. OJ and stuff like that. But he's he's absolutely great. Uh, we need more Nathan Lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude. It's, it's just like they honestly, yeah. Those two were like some of my favorite characters. I was actually sad after this episode we don't get them that much. Um, but I understand why because they have to wrap up the storyline. Yeah, it's just it's just really cool and also like and not the the silence and no dialogue doesn't just extend to uh, Theo. It extends to the entire episode with the other characters when their perspective. But the way it's written, right? All the characters are in situations where they shouldn't really be talking. Whether it's a funeral, where. <laughs> Where Oliver and Mabel like they want to talk but they can't. They're like, Shh, we have to be quiet. Or whether they're hiding um from uh Theo mm -hmm. once he discovered their grave robbing, uh they their grave robbing business. Mm -hmm. Or whether it's um uh, Charles and Jan, by the way, who's the sexy bassoonist that uh Charles mm -hmm. is dating. And um uh, it's right after right when they first meet or when they're having an intimate moment, they're just kind of staring into each other's eyes. So nothing ever feels forced. And if anything, it's all very natural in the sense that how they incorporate it, which is good dialogue, good direction, um, good audio design. It's just a lot of good visual elements. It's just good creative planning. I also love... Unlike that, Dexter, Blake. I love that it flips kind of the the way that we're used to thinking things on thinking of things on its head, where, you yeah. know, they say in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Yeah. Well, in the land of the silent, the man who can sign is the only one who can communicate. Exactly. So yeah. your main, he becomes instead of being the person who's least able to communicate to us as the audience or to the outside world through this episode, he becomes the only one, well, one of two or three people who can actually communicate or where you actually get subtitles for what they're saying. Exactly. Because yeah. like, oh yeah, by the way, he could like, yeah, he could read lips. Like, he can read lips. Yeah. Yeah. And he's. What's it called? Like he's also great in Theo, mm -hmm. and then um, you know, and then you know, one of the most um, I say tragic, but it's like one of the most affecting death scenes I've seen on TV for a while. Not because it's like super gory or anything like that, but because of how sudden it is in the audio design and from his perspective. Because so basically, um, one thing we haven't mentioned is a tie dye guy, which uh, what's it called? Charles sees goes up, you know, goes up the stairs after uh, you know Tim Tim Kono's murder is happening, and he assumed tie dye guy was one of the subjects. But it's really, it really turns out to be Mabel's uh, friend, mm -hmm. who actually turns out to be Tim Kono's friend. And also the tie-dye guy is um, Oscar, who's also part of the Hardy group, and Tim Kono and Mabel's friend. And was charged with murder for one of their friends. <laughs> yes, which was their girl, uh, his girlfriend. His girlfriend. And yeah. everybody suspects, well, at least he and Mabel suspect that Tim Kono saw something. Yeah. And then, well, no, no, it's true. Because Tim Kono, remember Tim Kono, not even well, so that I, they know, I, because I, Tim yeah, Kono said, like, yeah. it was someone else. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but then he, he kept silent for a reason because Teddy intimidated him. Because we find out in the episode that, you know, basically um, uh, Theo and the the girl, 
the girlfriend, mm-hmm. uh, once or Oscar's girlfriend, they kind of uh, form kind of a bond because both of them know uh, ASL sign language. And, you know, after... Well, and she can kind of see through him being deaf. Yeah. And she accepts him as who he is versus the way that his father looks at him as it's something that needs to be overcome, the fact that he's deaf, instead of something to accept. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, Zoe. Zoe, that's Zoe, name. yeah. Yeah, so like, and then once, um, and then, you know, Zoe has an argument with Oscar on top of the building, and Oscar leaves, and then, you know, Theo comes in and, you know, tries to comfort uh, Zoe. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, let's just say that he's not the best with the ladies in terms of just, like, talking to them. And he was like, oh, you know, I guess I need to bring back. Because, you know, she's so... That's how they met. She, By the way, they they fucking break into people's apartments and stuff. Yeah, right. that, that's what the Hardy Boys do, guys. Exactly. They break yeah. into people's apartments and steal their jewelry. So she... And then she stole... Um, uh nathan lane's character teddy's uh you know ring that he stole from a career, you know from yeah, a corpse from a corpse yeah and, yeah she's and like then, ooh, pretty ring i'm gonna take this and then teddy was like okay i need that ring back yeah so you know theo asked her actually kind of nicely but you know at the worst time possible yeah, because she was at such a low point horrible yeah yeah and then <sighs> so not good he, he bro you should you should have you should well, have read the tea see, leaves. The problem he was, should have read the tea leaves. He then pro- <clears throat> he then moved on to proposition her afterwards. Mm-hmm. He was like, "Hey, you know, if you want, I can get you a real ring someday." Like, basically, like asking her out, and then yeah. she she like the, he, that screams like, virgin, wow. virgin, yeah. <laughs> being a pussyless fuck, virgin. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just, Please cut that out, Jason. I'm just kidding. No, no, Jason, keep that in. I'm just kidding. It's it's fine. He's, he's a pussyless fuck, but <laughs> but but um, let's just say this. Uh, but yeah, no, I I I think that was a good character moment without directly screaming that he's a virgin. That he has he's very inexperienced when it comes to dating girls or understanding you know their emotional states. Well, connecting to other people in general. Yeah, exactly. Because it's mostly just his dad. Mm-hmm. And he felt isolated because of, you know, his... Uh, he feel like his disability impairing him mm-hmm. from proper communications. Um, and to find somebody... That's why he's so enamored with Zoe. To find somebody who actually... Besides the fact that she's a physically attracted to him, but is able to communicate to him effectively. Like no one else, right? And then, you know, she gets real aggressive with him. And then she, you know, rightfully so. Because, you know, not the best thing to say to a girl. Mm-hmm. We just had an argument with, you know, her boyfriend. Um, yeah, don't ask her. Hey, can I get that ring back? And uh, do you want to go out sometime? And I'll give you a ring later. And because you know she has a, <laughs> a point in the same is that how come all these guys they always promise with like you know like like something afterwards and I want to not do it. Yeah. Um, and in a complete freak accident because because he did not mean to kill. Yeah, her. that was it, it. Was not murder. It was homicide at best. Yeah, it's an accidental yeah. homicide, right? Yeah. And then cuz like, you know, she he took the ring and he just like he just like go oh, like back off, right? And yeah. then she fell off. And then the reason why the death was so affecting is that from his perspective, cuz you don't hear the sound splat, you don't you don't hear like the struggle movements. You mm-hmm. which usually a lot of people forget that audio is kind of what makes murders as uh, gruesome or intense as they are. Mm-hmm. But there's no audio. You're just watching two people like kind of like a normal argument, right? Yeah, and they're having a fight, but it's all silent. You don't, yeah. you know. Ed. And then, so she, and then she just and he just takes her in, and so she basically accidentally falls off the building, right? He accidentally pulls pushes her off. Mm-hmm. Um, and it happens so quickly and without sound that I was so alarmed when I first watched. I was like, oh, oh shit, mm-hmm. wow! And and you know, with the reveal, Tim Kona just right there, and, and then Teddy just walks off. As if, like, you know, just like us, we become numb to the experience. We're trying to phase that out, right? Because yeah. we, we've grown to bond and care about this guy, uh, Theo, who just accidentally killed, you know, Zoe, right? And it's and, and that was so affecting, too. Just the way it was executed, the way it was handled, the way how quick it was, the sound design is excellent, excellent mm-hmm. filmmaking. You know what I mean? It's, it's if only if only the Quiet Place Part Two, John Krasinski was able to learn about this. Yes, and just know how to do it. Fucking John Krasinski, watch this fucking show and know that they did one fucking episode. It's comedians, this one episode, a hundred million times better than you. You have ran out of Quiet Place mentions for the year. I told you I would give you ten. 
That was number 10. I No, this was like number 25. What are you talking about? <laughs> I mentioned it every episode. I've, not every I've over, episode. I not, have I only exceeded it. I manifested in the person, got my trail uh, tractor and ran it over and spot the gut out through the back. It's like, no, I've I've uh, mentioned how much I hate John Krasinski. I'm just kidding, John. If we met in person, maybe we could have a beer. If you want to have a beer. If not, uh, uh, no, fuck you. Until you make a better movie. Be careful, John. He'll steal your wife. No, it's I'm just John. You actually don't have that bad of a show, bad of a movie. I'm just like, because I maybe I'm just like super critical, and then I'm like, oh, like it's like I, I criticize because I, I want I want you know these movies to be better as good as is possible to be at. So so you're saying that he's not doing as good as you think he could do? No, no. So you think he's, that he's better than what he's put on screen? Well, I don't know about that. We'll see. Maybe I I think you're a talented guy, John. I think you have potential and stuff like that. I don't know if it's also part of the obligation to, you know, to uh, the studios and stuff like that while you have to do this. But this is my end of my John Krasinski rant. Because I realized I could go for three hours about him. Yeah. So getting back to what makes it so visceral, too, is that immediately afterwards, uh, after this girl dies, Mm -hmm. and he feels like he is responsible for killing her. Because yeah. he is. He is, he is. He goes back to his apartment oh, and yeah, immediately that... just pukes on the floor. And A very puking, human reaction. Puking silently also is very strange to Yeah, experience. it's disturbing to watch because yes. it's just a pure visual noise. And you have to imagine what it would like actually sound. And when you imagine it, it was just so, so was much. Yeah. It was and he was like, crying yeah. without sound, which in a weird way is more heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Dude, that guy, I hope he gets some type of awards, uh, Theo. Dude, fan fucking tastic! Oh my god, I if I'm I'm not even joking. I call it right. Emmy, Emmy's 2022, uh, only murders in the building, best comedy series. Not only nominated, it should win. Mm-hmm. And what's called and best actor uh, is either Martin Short or C. Martin. They should win. Uh, best actress, Selena Gomez is really good. Her best, I don't know, not for her. She got nominated best. Uh, I think the best supporting actress could be uh, what's her name? Oh, uh, Amy Ryan for Jan. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and yeah. and would you, and after we finish uh, talking this up, we'll get to that real quick. Yeah. Actually, I'm pretty much done with the episode in terms of. Yeah. So uh, basically, the episode. Yeah, it just ends like yeah. that with uh, Teddy Demos basically then going uh, to his father. His father being like, "How bad is it? Did you do? Like, are you responsible? And did anyone see? Yeah. And that's where he reveals. Teddy reveals to his dad that yeah. Um, what's his name? Uh, Tim Kono saw. Yeah, Tim young, Kono saw. young yeah. Tim Kono saw. Not even that much. She's like three years younger. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, th- that was ten years ago. No, it wasn't ten years ago. Yeah, that was ten years ago. Okay, you continue. No, because okay, he went away for ten years. No, he did not go away for ten years. I, I swear to you. I, okay, what's it called? This it was is ten years I, ago. It's not ten years ago, Miles. They were all in high school. She's twenty-eight now. They were eighteen. No, she wasn't in high school when that happened. Yeah, she was. What's it called? Okay. Let us... Uh, sorry. Okay, Jason? No, 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 we'll keep right this, no, no. We'll keep this on uh, because this is an important part of the podcast. So we have to know... Yeah. That they have to know that you're wrong. It's a it's a, it's a New Year's Eve party, too. Yeah, no. It was like two to three or five years ago at most because... What? No. They weren't... Co- no, no. Because they were already... Like, some of them were in college or out of college. No, they... And Oscar wasn't in... Oscar wasn't... Uh, he was only in juvie for a little bit. Oh, no, not even juvie. He was, like, in jail for only a little bit. He didn't... He ten wasn't... years. He got sentenced to ten years. Yeah, I, I... I... What's it called? This is important, people. We have yeah, to... We have to prove... Sorry. We have to prove that Miles is wrong. What's it called? It's... That's an important part of the podcast. It's half of the podcast, half a clue Miles is wrong. Unless... Unless he's right, then I'm sorry. I... Uh, I am... Is years... Ten be- years. Is this years behind... You're right, actually. You are right. Ten years, ten years, motherfucker. Oh fuck. Uh, uh, Jason, it's time to cut this out. I'm just kidding. Uh, (laughs) I'm just kidding. Uh, It is. You know the thing is, then what? That's the fault in the my first fault in the show. They don't look ten years younger. Uh, They don't look ten years uh, younger. They do look younger though. Barely. What are you talking about, Tim Kono? That fucker ages like a unicorn. Yeah. Yeah, he looks the same. I mean, he looks Actually, like a baby you know, face not, at the beginning not, and a baby face. Not gonna lie, like I saw t- Tim Kono when he was young. Yeah, he looks the same now. Yeah, dude, that guy is like. By the way, he has like a body of a Greek god. They don't show it on the show because they're trying to hide it. Because I be, I think it was distracting. But I was seeing like his stuff for the Romeo and Juliet Broadway adaptation that he did with Elizabeth Olsen. Mm-hmm. The guy has packs, upon, uh, packs upon packs. 
like and he had his his entire rib cage show, but not in like the skinny way, but in like the buff way. And he's like he's, he has like operating on like five percent body fat or some shit. Like he's crazy on men's health fitness. Um, and it's not me just jerking off the actor who plays Tim Cano, but then uh, it's like it's weird. That guy doesn't age. It's, and speaking so of unicorns, maybe Steve they Martin, did it right then. No, because you know why Selena Gomez looks the same too and she ages no she looked younger bear no she did not look that much younger she did not oscar especially oscar didn't look that much younger oscar I'll, looks I'll the fucking same uh, they fucking look the one. same um and they're supposed to be teens right so yeah so they were supposed to be like 18 19 years old and they did not look like teens all this kind yeah. of shit went you know down. what you know what i don't even blame myself and i like to do that because i always like to deflect blames onto others it's a healthy way of living you should um, blame yourself because the they cost? stated that he was in jail for 10 years no no i i don't blame myself you know why because visually visually it conveyed to me it was only three to five years because there's no fucking way any of them look like actual teenagers have you seen what teenagers look like not like them not Mr. Greek God, Mr. Tim Kono. You know what I mean? What, whatever. Whatever. Okay, fine, Miles. You got this. One of the only times you got. One of the only One times. One of the only times. I'm always right. My, Miles. Even when I'm wrong, Miles, I'm right. It's The reason why he calls half a clue is you have half a clue about everything. Yeah. That you're well, the reason so why we're you. the show. I'm sorry. No, I'm the brains behind this operations. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> What's it called? Okay, I'm just kidding. But, um, yeah. I can't okay, believe you're that right, this is you're what right. we're arguing about. And to, it's, <laughs> This is uh, the best part. Yeah, so uh, 10 years ago, Tim Kono got that's intimidated so ridiculous. by... ridiculous. 10 years. Yeah, by Demos's, uh by Oh, you know what? Teddy Theo Demos doesn't even look Theo. 10 years younger, yeah. too. He looks the same. You got, you got, you can't deny. No, he, I he can't deny. The same. No, they, they look the they same. Did, they did a bad job in aging. They did a bad job in aging. As much as I love yeah. the show, the show. I'm not. I'm gonna, before I give my final rating, I'm. This is the first time because I love it so much. I'm gonna give my um. Yeah, but our, does, our classic rating does and a Steve number. Steve Martin rating. look thirty years younger when they show the clips of him from Brazos. Actually, a little bit because at least they dyed his hair. That <laughs> 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 she put some effort, but yeah. also that I mean. I, I maybe the budget was low and they couldn't use the de-aging software yeah. that a lot of uh, you know major studios use. Honestly, now I found I, at first I was gonna say perfect flawless show. No, I found my first flaw, and it's it it actually really really bad for me to actually be like confused about that. And usually not for me to be confused about that because visually it didn't convey that it was ten years ago. Who goes to jail for three years for murdering? No, a I know. Girl? At first, that was like a min miniature flaw, but I think it was maybe because uh, it was mostly circumstantial evidence, and there was no actual DNA evidence. That, that's another reason why, right? Yeah, yeah, that, that they weren't able to put in for that long and. Etc. or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and then maybe his lawyers did a plea deal, like it's possible, you know what I mean? But my gosh, they fucked up with the aging. My one only flaw with the show, wow, I'm so sad. I, you know what, I, I, I'm kind of sad that I brought this up now, yeah. But let's get back no, to no, the no. point. You gotta admit, that is a flaw, yes, that is a flaw. That's a flaw. Is that I'll your only flaw, it. too? Uh, unless I think of more. Okay, so for now, yes. Okay, yes. so now let's get into... Wait, I, I never got to finish. You interrupted me before I'm sorry, I could finish what yeah, I was saying. And no one cares about what you talk about, Miles. Yes, he, just... <laughs> yes they do. Okay, so Theo talks to his father, Teddy Demos, and it's like, yeah, Tim Kono saw. And this is 10 years younger Tim Kono, 18-year-old Tim Kono. So Teddy Demos goes to Tim Kono and it's like, hey, you, you know your little friend Mabel over there? Yeah, well... Same thing might happen to her if anybody finds out that my son was involved in this stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So basically, he's like, you know, you don't realize why he's not saying anything. And when you find that out, you're like, oh, shit. Well, you know, Mabel broke things off with him and Oscar kind of got screwed over. But it wasn't because he was trying to protect himself. It was because he was trying to protect Mabel. I agree with that. It's yeah. um and yeah, it's it's cool things we learn about um the show. And they have like specific moments like that in each episode, sometimes from a different PO POV. Um like a we have a Martin Short episode, we have a C Martin episode, we have a Mabel episode, the Flash Show episode. And honestly, you know what my second favorite episode is the fan episode? The one right after that. Oh, that was fucking great. Just see the fans' perspective of this. Mm -hmm. 
And and if anything, they're not annoying. They actually offer their own unique um, perspectives into the matter. Well, I also liked how Martin Short was like looking down as, at them as uh, like plebeians and stuff like that. And yeah. he's like, "Oh yeah, I wish our fan base was a little bit cleaner, but yeah. these guys will do." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has the best joke. See, it's like so dry because he has eccentric moments, right? Yeah. Where he, you know what's it called? Um, and it, when he talks about splash, it's gonna be what's it called? This and that. But then. When he says ridiculous shit like that, yeah. where it's kind of super horrible, but he says it's so dry and matter of fact, that it's mm-hmm. so fucking funny. He's a genius. All right. So, yeah. So, there's that fan episode. Um, and then let us, you know, and also there's some weird visual elements that I love. Like, remember the bouncing ball episode? Oh, at the very beginning? Yeah, at the very beginning. The yeah. bouncing ball segment or like the... the where, uh, where he the falls pan. off the stairs. He's talking about the Claire de Lune piece. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And then at the end of the episode, he... What triggers that? Uh, it was after he talked to his son, I yeah. think. Yeah. He talks to his son and he's like, okay, well, this is going to be my final chance with this. Yeah, as a podcast. Thing. Yeah. And he just falls off the stairs, bounces on the ground, and then it goes to Mabel dropping. Was that a ring that she dropped? Yeah, and it came back. Yeah. The, and then um, for Brazos, it's the, uh, the pan with the egg. Yeah, which the, the omelet is very important. Yeah. All right, so let's before we get into the final killer verdict, mm-hmm. uh, what's it called? Okay, let's go. Okay, from episodes one through. Okay, let's just go for episode episode. Um, who we thought the murder uh, victims were? Because I have my list in my head and I memorized it from my thing. I don't want to pull up mm-hmm. my phone. All right, so for episode one for me, I thought. Okay, so I thought the potential murder suspects were. Um, okay, for what's it called? I knew it wasn't Selena Gomez because you're just not going to do that. And two, it's just because like even though they revealed that. They, you know, at the end, we she was fr- uh, friends with Tim Kono. Mm-hmm. I just knew it wasn't going to be her. It's definitely not Martin Short or Steve Martin because I it just I wouldn't buy it for a fact, even if it was. Um, but from the characters that we were introduced and we knew, my main my main um, targets were Bunny. First mm-hmm. episode it was either Bunny, uh, Teddy Demas. I didn't see much of Theo before, or actually no, we didn't even see Teddy until. Uh, second episode so not it's not teddy yeah so it was just bunny it was bunny the next um and bunny and the tie-dye guy were the main mm-hmm. two after after episode two i was including the neighbors and howard the cat dude and then after uh episode three and so i was thinking about uh teddy demas right possibly but there he wasn't very strong i was still thinking with tie-dye and bunny and shit um and then the bassoonist came i think like episode four or five mm-hmm I was like, okay, she seems like a fringe character. You suspected it before anyone else. If you suspected, because I because I'm just like because it's just like it's a it's a it's a classic murder mystery trope, mm-hmm. right? The fringe character that gets involved with the investigators and uh, personally so, and then eventually turns out to be the murderer. I will say that they introduced her character in a way that did kind of limit my suspicions. Exactly, it's because, super effective because they really had that plot line going of Steve Martin trying the to romance. get over his old romance. And yes. his old romantic issues and kind of showing he's getting better now yeah. because of these people that he's joined up with. So introducing a romantic character to go with him didn't seem out of the question for me See, for I, no other reason than yeah, that. So the, exactly. that's, a, that's that. the way for these murder mysteries, that's the way you introduce a character. Without making it su- yeah. super obvious. But interesting enough, when it was episode... Uh, when it was yeah, but she was like already on top of my list, like fringe subject because of the trope. Um, and then Ty Dagger was gone because of Oscar and stuff like that. Um, and then Angel, before we found out who Angel was, was like, mm-hmm. okay, he was up there too. So it was like Angel and Jan were my top two. And Bunny. They're my top three. Surprisingly Bunny. But um, as Bunny eventually got out, especially after episode seven, mm-hmm. even because you know, especially when uh because I, I knew the show was more clever than it led on to be, and that I felt like if the actual murders were and also because, unfortunately, because I, w- I wasn't watching it week to week, I knew the episode count. Mm-hmm. So, like, when there was episode seven and the reveal of the, the killer came, I was like, there's no way, right? There's going to be a twist. And I think that, for well, me, also, hurt the show. there hadn't been a strong red herring yet. 
Exactly. Right. Right. So, and that's how these murder mystery things always go. It's like they're always chasing one person, and they get this really strong, yeah. really good lead, and then the case falls apart. And as it falls apart, that's when they come across that key piece of evidence that recontextualizes so all everything the that they've seen before. so far. And yeah, the mysteries are exactly say three or four main, mm-hmm. and then there's one primary, but that primary turns out to be a red herring, and it's actually not even amongst the four. It's like somebody on the outside yep. that we haven't knew. Um, but so yeah, once we find out about Teddy and uh, Theo, even though they were pieces of shit in their own their own right, not necessarily the murderers. Emily was taken out of my well, list. They were murderers. Oh wait, no, not no, no, not not yeah. Teddy, not Teddy. He covered yeah. up. He actually technically never murdered anybody. But that's yeah. still being complicit. Yeah, complicit. But he yeah. didn't. Per- yeah, murder. Like um, and it's called an accessory after the fact. Exactly. Yes, I know. <laughs> I'm not my legal sense in terms of actual the physical act of killing Miles. Okay. You fucking bitch. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not this abusive towards Miles usually. I, I'm only. He more... just does this for the points on Twitter. Yeah, you know? either points on Twitter or in bed. You know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. So, um, what's it called? It's uh, so and then after episode seven, I'm like, okay, for me, then it narrows it down to like pretty much jan right but i but you know i wasn't like ding ding 100 percent. it was about like 60 70 percent for me so you never suspected the doorman what's it called the doorman um not as much because i think i remember the first episode he wasn't in the location when the alarm went off so i was thinking about that but it just logistically wouldn't be possible mm-hmm. and then also like he's very he everybody knows him yeah so they would have recognized if he was going upstairs um so i don't think that would have worked out so um, so I was thinking jam, but I didn't know why the motive wasn't there, right? But then, um, by the way, my one of my favorite uh, cameos, mm-hmm. besides Sting, who was fantastic. Yes, uh, uh, we never talked about Sting yet, did we? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. There was a whole thing about Sting. It's actually pretty hilarious. Yeah. No, and he bring a turkey. He, and stuff. he was obviously not going to be the killer. Yeah. But they they suspected him, and it just kind of made for a fun little segment. Yeah, Sting yeah. was never on my list because I know <laughs> that's just yeah. ridiculous. But it was funny, you know. And then poisoning the dogs and all this stuff. And I was thinking, like, who could have have been right? Like, what would be Jan's motive, right? And once Bros's stunt double came in, by the great cameo. That's when I'm like, oh, okay, ex-lover. So they were lovers. Tim Kono and Jan were lovers. Wow. Okay. So now I can see she poisoned them and then made it seem like it was suicide. Yeah, it's just in a weird way, like when we found out that Jan was the murderer, I, I don't know why, but I was like strangely attracted to her. Yes. Yeah, it's weird, right? It's um, so weird. It's so- a bit weird. The thing is, when she's doing her, you know, typical, oh, villain, yeah, you found me out, but I'm going to have the last laugh speech that, you know, villains always do where they reveal their plan and things like that. Oh, and we've already mentioned it. We found out that, that, you know, besides the fact that we found out the ex-lover of Tim Kono, it's that uh, they found out the clue because Mabel and uh, Oliver... They were playing with Tim Kono's sex toys and found a bassoon cleaner. Exactly. And they're like, cool. And it, you know, it cuts back to yeah. her. How do you use this thing, Mabel? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so no, Mar- Mar- Martin Short's like trying to like They, they were like one step away. I'm glad they didn't say it. They were yeah. one step away from saying, which holds this is going? Yes. You know I mean? <laughs> I'm, I'm glad they did it because I think that would have been too much but for Martin Short. But uh, actually, no, he would have pulled it off. Yeah. Which uh, the bassoon cleaner to describe it to our audience who might not have seen the show which if you haven't why are you listening to this go watch the show yes but um bassoon cleaner it's like a little big ball on the end and kind of a semi-flexible stick going down and then a little like feather like you know duster thing at the other end yes so you can see how it kind of looks like it could be a sex toy just not one from earth yeah Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's weird. So yeah, it's yeah, it's it's, it's we're both we uh Miles requested like do not watch the last episode of Zombie. So I, I saved episode nine and ten with him with I, every urge of my will not to watch it. It was hard, right? Yeah, because it was. like right at the end of episode eight, Jan gets stabbed. Yeah. And it's just like, like oh, red hair because she yeah. just stabbed herself. But uh, I mean, I kind of that's when I started suspecting her. Yeah, I was like, okay, yeah, I doubt it. Because if they were gonna kill her, they wouldn't kill, like stab her yeah. to the side. It would be in the stomach and stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's whatever. Um, and then you know, we find out the handwriting is from her too. But um, yeah, and then you know, it was Jan. It was cool, and the moment was cool. 
And you know what? Actually, my second flaw of the series is very nitpicky, this one. But when uh, Selena Gomez, Mabel, punches um, uh, Jan, oh my gosh, that was just not convincing at all. Like, it, it could have been cut differently, shot differently. And that was weird because like, it was excellent. It was like 10 out of 10 almost, except the aging. So actually, nine. Out, yeah. They yeah. were all high on gas. And then, <laughs> and then I they was like... They were just like, portraying that they were high on gas. No. That's why the fighting wasn't very good. No, not even the fight. It's one punch. I'm not even, it's not fighting. You can make a punch look convincing, just like from a different angle. I'm just you know? trying to make some excuse for the show. I know. You, you, got, you admit that it did not look convincing. <laughs> uh, honestly, I didn't really mind. It, yeah. It's like all these it, nitpicks, it's, that, it's a nitpick. that we're calling flaws. You know, it's not a flaw. Same it's thing a with nitpick. The, yeah, same thing with the age thing. That was also kind of okay, a wait, nitpick. That that is not a nitpick. That is a big thing, actually. That's a storytelling device. See, but the thing that is, is a story. You tell me, Oscar, it. Oscar. If anything, he 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 grew less uh, facial hair. <laughs> from, I understood it from and ten years. I understood it. And I didn't care. What's it called? Yeah, because the show is so good that yeah. I, I didn't mind. But it's just like that is that is a flaw. That is a flaw, and I'm saying it'll factor. It won't factor into my overall rating of like our half a clue rating, but it's gonna factor into my number rating because I'm very objective about that. Okay. Okay. So, um, what's it called? Uh, so yeah, I went to myself. What about you, Miles? What was your? Tell me how, what were your suspects throughout the episodes? Okay, so my first suspect that I came across, which a- after the first episode, I was like, okay, this tie guy, tie guy looks weird, but I kind of was like. He obviously too obvious, right? didn't do it. Right. He obviously is like the person that kind of sparks the imagination. Yeah. For like who they're looking for. And um, then I was like, oh, yeah, it's probably going to be somebody that one of them knows at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of what I was thinking. So the first episode I came away from it and I was like, well, I don't really have enough information yet to suspect anybody. Um, going through the second episode the security clerk lady yeah uh i started suspecting her a little bit yeah the one who sells them gut milk and stuff like that and it's like yeah i was just about to throw away tim kono's files and stuff like that it really seemed like she had access and knowledge about all the residents and she would be kind of in the perfect position to do it yes But they kind of didn't go that direction. And when they really started ignoring her and just using her as a comedic bit, I was like, yeah, no, that's not going to be her. Also, I couldn't find the motive. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, And then the Demoses really did come onto my radar around like episode three. Yeah. Yeah. But Uh, they were gone by episode seven, right? Yeah. 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 It would have been too obvious. Well, so once it turned out that once they like actually kidnapped all three of the characters, I was like, yeah, no, they didn't do it. Because they would have killed them if they were actually murderers, you know what I mean? Yeah. Hence Jan. She was like actually trying to not even just kill those three, she just killed the entire building. Yeah, and she was like, up in flames with all of you. (laughs) Yeah. um, Amy Ryan is fantastic as Jan, by the way. I always loved her before. She was like in win-win. She deserves uh, best supporting actress. Win. She deserves to win. This expert, how she did it. Yeah, and I mean, just... uh, and and then like I said, then Jan was kind of yeah. revealed. I but know. I also thought yeah. throughout the doorman was involved somehow, uh, especially when the Demoses when yeah. when it was revealed <clears throat> that they didn't. That he might it, be in season two. So yeah. So I was thinking because like it was revealed. Oh, there's video of him standing outside. And then for a second there, I was thinking, well, that seems an awful lot. Were, like, they, were they just smoking? Uh, they were just standing outside. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, well, that seems an awful lot like they're there for an alibi. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Which means, did they have somebody else take care of Tim Kono? Yeah. And then I thought about, you know, the doorman's interaction with Theo yeah. and stuff like that. And the whole thing of him signing, I hate these fucking people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and I was going back to that and I was like, did they get the doorman in on this? So I was thinking that for a while. And then finally... It kind of just became obvious that it was Jan. Yeah. 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 And in a good way. Like, it was yeah. a nice setup. And everything lined up pretty well. Like, the poison, mm-hmm. the bassoon, the sex toys, the ring. Um, yeah. What's the sixth floor, the trash bags. It was good. It's good writing. It's good mm-hmm. writing. It's excellent and, and writing. And it went from everything being circumstantial evidence yeah. to being really solid, hard evidence. Yeah. 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 I agree with that. Yeah. But 
I thought it was really good. But yeah, uh, Amy Ryan, that speech that she gives oh. when, when she's been exposed. It could have been so corny and cheesy, but it flips yeah. it, without music too. Because sometimes yeah. they do a musical cue or they do a camera push in. But it's just the same thing. She just flips like right there in the same angle. Yeah. And the way that she flips is actually when uh, uh, Steve Martin's character. I can never remember their actual oh, names. Charles. I, I, Charles. Yeah, Charles. Yeah. He, she's like, oh, you, you aren't drinking very much, are you? And then he's like. I'm not drinking at all. These are stage steps, sips, like, because he knows that she's a poisoner and she poisoned Tim Kona. Yeah. And then at that moment, she realizes that he know or that he knows that she did that. So yeah. then she just breaks with the whole facade of like, oh, I mean, they don't think it was me, do they? Just because there's this bassoon cleaner. <laughs> and he's like, no, I don't suspect you, but I would still love you even if you didn't kill Tim Kono. Yeah. And it's like, it was very well done. Yes, it was. Yeah. And when she breaks, it's like completely different character, but the same at the same. It, yeah, yeah. It, it's only a know? slight difference in like body posture. She's a little bit more loose, mm -hmm. a little bit more forward, not as rigid. She smiles Slightly a little bit psychotic. more. Slightly psychotic. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's so good. And dude, honestly, that whole comedy bit with, uh, uh, what's it called? Charles C. Martin's character, uh, yeah. going to the elevator, and then like her, his crotch gets hit by the <laughs> elevator door. Dude, it is fantastic. That is comedic gold. It's visual comedy, not dialogue. Mm -hmm. It's him struggling, and it actually has to do with the plot. Like, he's actually trying to warn people and save them. Yeah, and excellent, and excellent. He's just rolling into the elevator. Yeah, and his legs are like flopping up on the walls and stuff. Yeah, that's like classic Steve Martin right there. And it didn't feel forced because it happened because of the story. Yes. Because of the narrative, it actually because like uh, his interaction with the villain, and that's what I call like what's it called good blend between dramatic and comedic mm -hmm. elements. And and that, how you do so is that it's uh, the comedy is driven by the by the actual narrative plot events that happen, mm -hmm. and that's fucking great, fucking fantastic. Love the show. Good job, Steve Martin. Good job, Hoffman. You deserve a round of applause. And also, this probably had one of my favorite elevator chases that I've seen. Oh, you mean like in a show? Yeah, yeah because you know they had three different groups of people all going up and yeah. down to different Jan floors going and down, elevators. Oh, what's it called? Mabel and Oliver going up, and then uh, Charles going down, but yeah. in cavity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and kind of just everybody bouncing back and forth because Charles is chasing Jan. I can barely speak. Yeah, and Oliver and Mabel are like, "Oh no, she's gonna kill Charles." Charles. so and, they're chasing him yeah and then the doorman's just trying to be helpful and it's yeah. like yeah oh he, he thinks that he's just looted out yeah and uh it's such a but it, uh, it's such a i know he mentioned the sting thing yeah and he's sting, like don't don't worry this happened to mr sting before when the police broke up but don't tell anybody and he tells exactly <laughs> mabel and all yeah. how's it called <laughs> uh it's so great even the the doorman's great yeah um and howard cat is the funny like the leg the <laughs> Steve martin broke off the leg yeah. um howard is also in the other show that we were going to talk about today dexter new blood yes yeah, yeah. what's it called well it i guess we weren't going to talk about new blood today. but like but in, he's in, in january new, in, in new blood when we talk about that yeah yeah it's this is excellent um and then also to cap off like what i thought about it before we get to season two production like season one ending season two productions mm -hmm. and also emmys right um i think what's it called i also laughed super fucking loud when uh because you know steve martin's in a wheelchair um because you think you know he's basically just riddled with the poison but suddenly you know in the middle of like while she has a gun out and she's i'm gonna kill all of you she said he he he, he takes it he miraculously improved and i was like oh but my he god drank the gut milk yeah so, he drank so, the, it's so possible they, set it, they set it up because they're like yeah. oh yeah the gut milk will drain the toxins from your system yeah or yeah. or not yeah that's what i say and yeah. i like that he said that because it could have yeah. been either or but i was like okay fine they set it up whatever it's not my favorite part it's funny though yeah right and then it, it was a heartfelt moment right yeah where he talks about how um Oliver and Mabel has changed his life for the better, gave him a newfound purpose in his life. Almost like, not his career, he's doing fine, Steve Martin. But, um, and he's standing up and defending his friends and standing in the way of the bullet, right? Yeah. Only to find out that he's just... <laughs> he's just like incoherently just yeah. like mumbling, still stuck in the... Wheelchair. The, well, it's not even a wheelchair. Oh, it's, it's, a, a wheel it's a dog right? cart. It's a dog it, cart, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 I remember he had the dog cart. So it's it's hilarious, and I just love that. A good fake out. And it's from his mind of how he was seeing it. And that's so, uh, that's that's Charles. That's his character. Always grander than what's happening. I mean, he wants that to happen, right? Mm -hmm. But he's drugged up, so that should make sense that he would think that way. Um, yeah, and you can kind of even, like, feel it happening, even though you don't. Like, 
on my second viewing of it, uh, did you expect that to happen where he was still just going to be in the chair? I had, or did I, you I, think I, it was actually going on? I was like 50, 50 where I was like, is yeah. this, is he how, right? But yeah. the gut milk really worked that way. But I'm like, I, I hope, but I felt like the show was giving me a twist and so, it did right away. One of the things they actually did was as he stood up, they brightened up the shot a little bit. Yeah, yeah, right? I, yeah, right, right. Which I remember. tends to symbolize that it's something that's happening in the imagination. Yeah, like so was, they did a really good job of that, of kind of signaling. And the camera this isn't really happening, but it works so yeah. well. And the camera doesn't move like that much or push ins. Yeah. And the camera pushed in on Steve Martin, particularly in like a yes. dramatic moment, like a Brazos moment. Yeah. From his TV show. Ah, it's excellent. Okay. It, it, so then, I mean, that's how you shoot these things. It's, you don't just stand in the corner, one yeah, camera angle, and then expect multiple. your actors to carry the whole thing. It really is important how you shoot scenes exactly. and your set design and things like that. All right. So let's get into the actual ending and season two predictions. Okay. So at the end, we find out that uh, Bunny was actually killed in Mabel's apartment. and uh, Outside of Mabel's apartment. It was, oh no! It was out, murdered outside, but her dead body was found inside yes. Mabel's apartment, and pretty uh, far in Mabel's apartment too. Yeah, and wearing the only murders in the building uh, hoodie. sweat hoodie, yeah. by the way, it's just a nice touch. Um, and uh, Oliver and Charles go in, and then they're like, "What happened?" And as soon as it happens, um, the uh, SWAT just basically law enforcement comes in and arrests them all. Yeah. Um. So, but before that, uh, Charles and um, why can't I and Oliver? Sure. Charles and Oliver are up on the roof. Oh, yeah. And you can kind of start to hear sirens blaring. Oh, yeah, sirens blaring. And they get a text to get out of the yeah. building. Anonymous number. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's good. And then and, it, and that's when they go to save Mabel and end up getting just, arrested yeah. with her. And as they're going out, all, all the people are just walking. Everybody from the building is looking at them. And also, um, uh, Cindy mm-hmm. was saying only murderers in the building. I yeah. wonder if that's what season two is going to be called. Yeah, so in episode two, I believe, um, Cindy Canning, they have like a clip, you know, how um, in episode one, yeah, they at the beginning, they show that last scene yeah. with Mabel holding the dead body at the end. Yeah. And you're like, what happened here? Because it's the tie-dye oh, no, it's episode shirt. One. No, no, it's episode one. Yeah, the tie-dye mean? shirt. Yeah. Yeah, so that's episode one. But then episode two actually has Cindy Canning saying only murderers in the building. Oh, right, right. Yeah. yeah, the first time. And then that's get cut to later. Exactly. Uh, kind of alluding to this is the story of the story being told. Exactly. Yeah, which is cool. It's a very meta thing. Yeah. It fits the whole tone. All right. So now season two predictions. Um, since I just watched it, I don't have too many predictions. And then, uh, and actually with my, my prediction has kind of lined with what uh, Miles told me, right? Yeah. So Miles, get into your season two predictions. Okay, so my season two prediction is that Tina Fey is going to take a much bigger role. She, I hope so. It, it's going to start with uh, Steve Martin. So uh, Charles and Oliver getting released from jail. Yeah. They're only going to hold Mabel. Yeah. And they, they're like, well, you know, all the evidence points to you. You got blood on your body. You know, you, you were in this room, right, yeah. where she died. Uh, you, you know, it's your knitting needle. So it, uh, like all the evidence is going to be stacked against Mabel. So then Steve Martin and Martin Short are going to approach Tina Fey. Yeah. And basically be like, hey, you know, help us with this. Like, yeah. And then uh, either that or she's going to approach them uh, and they're going to track down basically what's going on, who actually murdered this person. Yeah. And um, there's going to be a thing about where Tina Fey actually got a phone call. Yeah. From uh, a person. Yeah. Uh, and she's going to have that phone call recorded and it's going to be like, come to the Arconia right now in like a modulated voice. Right. Right. So she's going to play that back for them and they're going to be like, wait, that's the same number that texted us. And then they're going to track that down. It's going to lead to being bought by Selena Gomez's credit card and delivered to her apartment. Yeah. That's going to be a very important crucial thing throughout the you story, hear I this think. steve martin you better listen to this if you take any of these ideas yeah you better give miles credit and money and royalties to have a clue i i think that he already probably already came up with the plot for this whole thing it, it doesn't but, matter yeah. we but we first publicly said it yes yeah and then it's going to basically turn out that bunny was working as a distributor for the demoses 
um, to help them kind of sell off their jewelry that they had harvested. Yeah. So that's kind of her role in this whole thing. And so when they find that out, it's going to be like, oh, well, then the reason she got killed because they're looking for motive was maybe by that guy Cutter, the one who sold the ring to uh, Tim Kono that he was looking for uh, last season. So they go and they try to track him down. They go figure out that that's a dead end. Probably some more people from the building get drawn into being suspects because of it. Yeah. And the big plot twist at the end is that the murderer wasn't from the building. It was Tina Fey. Bum, bum, bum. Yes. And it, uh, it, at first they suspect that it's her assistant. Yeah. Um, that's the person that they come to because the evidence points there. And then you find out, no, it's Tina Fey basically, you know, telling her assistant what to do. Yeah. And she was the one who masterminded this all and all these other true crime podcasts that she's done in the past. Yeah. She's manipulated the evidence to make the story and she's fabricated a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And they find out that, oh yeah, she basically made these things into the big shows that they are because of the production value, because she wanted to be big. And she even did this to begin or, and she even, you know, murdered this lady so that Mabel would go to jail because she wanted to join up and be part of this podcast because it was becoming more well-known and bigger than her podcast. And she kind of a media person, you know, I agree with her. Yeah. Yes. And that's a good, that's a good, honestly, it's a good plot line. Very engaging. I would love to see that. Yeah. I've heard that maybe after season two, that they might consider taking it out of New York. Okay. As possible. That, but we'll, we'll that see what happens. Interesting, but it is only murders in the building. Yeah. So it'd be a different building, I guess, in a different country. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. I think I, I I like that I like the theory I like the plot line. Hopefully it, it goes well. If it goes that way, honestly, I'd be very satisfied. But I I trust Steve Martin and John Hoffman and what they'll do and make it unpredictable. Um, that would be very great to have Tina and also having Tina Fey as an expanded role. She's fantastic. I love her. Yeah, and she'd be the, she'd be the extra addition to the series that I think the show would 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 need in the season two. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems like they kind of were setting her up for an extended role. Yeah, and I think that it's probably one of those things where she might have been down for it. Maybe not either. Not able to really. Commit do for as, season one. Do as much for season one. Or the store just didn't need her. Or they season. couldn't afford her for season one. Yeah. But now that the, it's gained so much traction. Hopefully. You no know, budget. It's, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I mean, this is a show that, I mean, for God's sake, they had Sting, you know? Yeah. It's, they, they could. They could yeah. Get, they they get can Tina get Fey. Tina Fey. I mean, Sting, this is uh, the second good thing that I've seen him act in. Oh, you're talking about Dune 1984? That yes. doesn't count. I love Dune 1984, but that's not count. That's not, that's not, that's objectively not great. Yeah. Even, even Dave, if the director disowns it, then okay. But yeah, it was just fun seeing Sting playing himself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I love how he thought he was guilty. Like, oh, I'm, I'm guilty of Tim Kono. I yelled at him and he committed suicide. And they were like, no, he was murdered. Oh, thank God. Yeah. He was, <laughs> and he starts singing a song. Uh, oh no, I didn't till kill Tim Cohn. No, <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, ah, not a masterpiece. Not <laughs> yeah, like, oh, uh, it's uh, hard writing songs. Yeah, I thought he was gonna smash the guitar when. Uh, yeah, yeah, I thought I thought he was, but he did it. But uh, no, it was perfect. It uh, was. It was because, good though. like, you felt like I guess that was also part of the joke because after he sings the song, Martin Short's character is like, oh yeah, um, you know, not a masterpiece, not one of your best, and then uh, Sting's just like. Okay, and, um, and you he know, puts it back. He, writing writing songs is hard, and just puts the guitar down. But for a second there, it looks like he's like super like angry and stuff. Angry and, and offended, it was, and, and it was and subverted like, our expectations. Yes. Which is good. What's it called? Okay, so let's get into what's it called? Uh, and, like award chances uh, and our uh, final oh, ratings. Do you have any ideas for possible plot lines? Not gonna lie, honestly, um, my uh, the plot, I have nothing. Well, nothing better than the one that you said because, like I said, it's just fresh and. It depends. Like if they're going to a different, I don't want them to go a different building. I want season two to be st stuck in Manhattan still. Mm -hmm. And then I would like it 
because it's hard too. Because like maybe it's, I I do like to see, I want to see more bunny colvins. These are more wishes and predictions. I would like to see more bunny colvins mm-hmm. um, backstory and see how this ties into all of this and what type of uh, new killers that we have. And I also like to see more of the therapists, right? Because they're like maybe there's something more going on going with that. But honestly, I think if it's if a media centric uh, focused uh, podcast and just to mm-hmm. keep it in house, and I would like to see Tina Fey. I I like your storyline the best, honestly. It makes sense that she's involved with the Demas, right? Yeah. Yeah. But also, I feel like her death is probably more... If it's not the Demas, if they could just yeah. write that out. I think her storyline, because she's technically the head and she might have seen something she was not supposed to or was or was letting something else slide, not including the Demas, like yeah. everything, right? But she's no longer okay with that. Yeah. Or, or she puts somebody's nerve and just put it away. Or maybe mm-hmm. we find out it's none of that and it's just because somebody got annoyed at her. Yeah. Yeah. And that would be funny, honestly. But we'll see. We'll or see. because Tina Fey thought that it was the best person exactly. to frame them up with because yeah. it was somebody who they had openly had conflicts with. Yeah, you're so a bitch. she could write a yeah, good that's story about it. Yeah. yeah. That's what Mabel says. Like, you're a bitch. Or like, what's like, mm-hmm. everyone thinks you're a bitch or something. Well, and, and the reason why I think that Tina Fey is going to be the big bad guy of the next season is because she was there as they were getting arrested. Yeah. Why? Oh, no. I, that makes sense, though, because not, she's just trying to get material for a podcast and record it's, it. But it's pretty hard to get around New York. I mean, in the time, it's not that I, I just went to New York recently. It's not that hard. Okay, so you could get halfway across New York in five to ten minutes. Oh, well, she didn't get there five to ten minutes. Well, I, what's it called? She might have already been in the area, no? You never know. Yeah. But well, yeah, we'll see. I, I'm we'll just see saying, how it, it was oddly suspicious that the police got there, go up, arrest these three bring them oh, back also, down we and have to find she's what's called also like in terms of like processing and maybe she got yeah. a tip from the police that it was going to be in that building so she might have already been there because yeah. she probably has connects well we'll see we'll see in season two how they handle it yeah yeah all right so let's get into uh war chances and final ratings for me i think i'm sorry ted lasso i haven't seen season two i know people say ted lasso is one of the best shows ever mm-hmm. um I've, I've just watched ted lasso parts of the i watched the first bit of the first episode and honestly i'm not gonna lie it, it is pretty fucking great we'll cover it one day um it might just be miles and me because uh, no one else seems to want to get apple tv plus well i still don't have apple tv plus yeah. but uh, I'll, I'm I'll gonna a free trial yeah i'm for... gonna get a free trial and i'm gonna use that time to watch the foundation which unfortunately i heard was pretty bad and yeah. watched head lasso yeah oh did you also hear um you know the next I think the next two Scorsese films are going to be exclusive. Really? Apple TV Plus, yeah. The one with Leonardo DiCaprio and uh, Robert De Niro. It's a $200 million historical, like, murder mystery. Okay, that's that's going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a great cast right there. And a Jonah Hill uh, rock biopic, or like all to off rock biopic. Yeah, I'm probably not going to watch that one. By Scorsese? By a rock? It's Scorsese dealing with uh, 70s and drugs. That's going to be fantastic. Come on. Okay. I, I've never really liked anything that Jonah Hill's been in. Wolf of Wall Street? Oh, you, I guess he was good in Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. Well, Moneyball? Moneyball? I liked everything that wasn't him about Moneyball. <laughs> he was like the super subdued in that film. Like he wasn't really even Jonah Hill. Like he didn't make jokes or anything. Yeah. Yeah. He was, okay. okay. I, I take that back. I don't like Jonah Hill in his standard type cast roles. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go. If he has a good director and that one was yeah. Ben and Miller. For... Okay. Uh, maybe I'll watch it then. Yeah. See, and think yeah. about it. The only time he was good was in Scorsese film. So guess what? He's going to be in Scorsese film. Okay. Right. Okay. I'll, tr- I'll trust you. All right. So um, war chances. I think, I think this one is a shoe in for best uh, comedy series. Mm-hmm. It's going to, I think it's going to win. It has the most buzz. Uh, even though every, if everyone sucks Ted Lasso's dick, maybe Ted Lasso wins. Um, best actor, it's going to be... I, and they're probably going to give it to C. Martin. And I, I hope Martin Short is not best supporting actor. They put him as best actor. Because um, I think that's a disrespect to Martin Short. Yeah, because yeah. Th- they were both lead actors. Yeah. Or... or... <sighs> They yeah, sometimes do hard. that. They sometimes do that so both of them get, get gets an award. Mm-hmm. But they put like a person with slightly less screen time as supporting actor, but it's bullshit. Like yeah. like Christian Bale for the fighter, he was best supporting, but he was mm-hmm. like one of the main characters. Bullshit. Yeah. Um actress Selena Gomez is not gonna make it. I I, I mean she's gonna get nominated but not gonna win. Um best supporting actress, Jan, hundred percent. Yeah. No, there's yeah. there's no way that she doesn't at least get nominated and she should win. Yeah. Oh, best uh, directing and best writing is, uh, I think, uh, going to be Boy in 6B. 
mm-hmm. episode six. That's yeah. gonna they, they, that's gonna have to win. And yeah, that's that's my prediction. Uh, uh, if you feel differently, also, do they have one for audio design? Uh, that's in the creative Emmys, and that's a separate. I think separate okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, was some of the main categories. Yeah, usually just writing, directing, and acting. Yeah, yeah, for that and best shows and uh, stuff like that. Best supporting actor. I I don't know. I don't know. Unless it, they put is, Martin is there, Short, you know, they could. But I, don't want I, to, I yeah. did see um, the guy who played Theo. Oh, but he was like in, like he was throughout the film. Ep- no, he was like he was, he was in three or four episodes. I would say yeah. like, but his, his main focus was just like yeah, yeah. I, well, may, the, uh, maybe honestly, yeah. You know, I'll say yeah, yeah. Or no, you know what? Who they put probably put instead of Theo, even though I think Theo might be special guest star. But you know who I think they put me in Nathan Lane. Nathan Lane. Nathan Lane. He was yeah. fantastic. Yeah, he was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So that's it. All right. So let's get into overall ratings. Mm-hmm. All right. Miles, you you know what? I'll go first because I know you you probably want to cap off the episode because this is your episode. Okay. So I'll say this. And I, I'm gonna do my objective and my subjective rating. Mm-hmm. My objective, because of that flaw, oh the aging is so bad. That was so bad. And also that one punch is a nitpick. Right, that's not a flaw. It's just a nitpick. That it's it, I cannot good conscious objectively give this a ten out of ten. It's a nine out of ten. No halfsies. But now I get to my subjective rating mixed with my objective. This rating. is the same man who gave Black Widow a ten out of ten. So oh, no, I put it in the shit bucket. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you said, don't, don't fucking lie. That's why lies, Miles. <laughs> you fucking harlot, bitch. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so, but my objective with the subjective and how much I enjoyed it and overall like how it stands in the other uh, comedy mystery uh, TV show genre, which is not much. Um, it's, it's, a, it's in the museum season one. I think one of the best season ones of a, any comedy series, actually. So that's my rating. It's in the museum. Oh, audio cue. I, I would definitely agree. Does belong in the museum. Yeah. Um, and I want to say just creatively, it seems like they managed to do something that, took a lot of risks with how they were doing it yeah yeah you know it was very different than other shows that you're seeing on television yeah um and i i really appreciated what they did with it it really felt like steve martin had a vision of what he wanted to do and uh who was his co co co-writer producer it was was hoffman hoffman yeah yeah Yeah, it was good yeah so i think i think that it just it did everything right. Yeah. It, it, it excelled it, it, in every category. Creativity, writing, innovation, acting, directing. Yeah. Even visual. cinematography is just is really good beautiful. for a comedy series. Not even for a comedy series, for any series. It's mm-hmm. really good. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm biased. I love New York. I love Manhattan. So well, that setting is always going to get to me. And I mean, the animated intros yes. to that being paralleled on Mabel's wall, mm-hmm. right? As, as she draws different people throughout yeah. the series on her wall. And, uh, you, you know, it just looked good and was very interesting. And yeah. I love how it was about them doing a podcast about murder mysteries. So at the beginning, they would have a title card that looked like a little podcast block. Yeah. Uh, that was always very interesting. And they kind of treated it in the manner that they treat podcasts. And then they also yes. addressed that podcast subculture as well multiple times throughout it yeah um you know with the fanboy episode or the episode where they're chasing uh mabel and they run into the yard yes, dogs yes who are horticulture yes. uh you know podcasters oh, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. Great. which ah, oh, that, that was that was good there's so much yeah. uh we're gonna force ron and blake to watch this for our season were, two review yeah there was a lot about this show and honestly you could watch this show two or three times and still be picking up stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a lot. There's a lot of the different little visual elements, visual cues, mm-hmm. uh, set up, plot they devices. They put little details in that you don't really understand until you've seen four episodes later. Yeah. And, yeah. This is absolutely great. Yeah. Right. It's you- everything a mystery should be. Exactly. Yes. All right, thank you guys for another episode of Half a Clue TV Review. This is a, what's called a, su- a surprise for me particularly and uh, a new addition. Uh, listen to us more, follow us on Instagram and uh, in YouTube for more Half a Clue related content. Thank you guys and catch you guys next time. <laughs>